Curtis Ventress and his architectural team are at the forefront of new airport design. In now boarding at the Denver Art Museum, visitors travel through an exhibition that features six airports designed by Denver-based Ventress architects. Denver International, Incheon, Seattle-Tacoma, San Jose, Raleigh-Durham, and the new Los Angeles International. They just happen to be some of the most recognizable airport terminals in the world, incorporating local culture and a sense of place, turning them into gateways to a community rather than a generic pit stop. Fentress and guest curator Donald Albrecht discussed this idea during the press preview for this exhibition. But we were looking at, you know, here we are in Denver, and we were just thinking, you know, wouldn't it be great if this building could relate to the place so that its significance grows out of this place? And so this video here shows some of the sketches of uh, that idea, of transforming the idea of sketching the mountains into the structure. And so that's, that led us into this concept of making the airport expressive of the place. And now every airport uh, brief that you pick up around the world talks about making an airport that's a gateway to a place uh, that relates to the place. And so that was an idea we used here in Denver, relating the structure to the place so it's unique, so the uniqueness grows out of the community. And it's also because airports are oftentimes so anonymous that the attempt to try to bring something of the local makes it, for instance, if you go to the Seattle airport, you'll see that the Pikes Market is actually, which is a major part of Seattle popular culture, is actually brought in to the Pacific marketplace that the airport has. That, that actually Christoph had mentioned. So it's the idea of trying to bring in the local into what is unfortunately oftentimes a totally anonymous, non-local building type. And, and you'll see that idea carried through in the Incheon room here with uh, the idea of relating it to Korean culture. And if you look back at the history, you'll see the beginnings of these buildings were in the modernist period of uh, architecture. So they were very flat-roofed, oriented, all the same, so one size fits all kind of a thing, mass produced from city to city. And so you could land in one city and think you were in another city because there's nothing unique about the building. As Christoph said, it you know sparked his imagination when he landed here as a, I must be in some place different. I must be in the West, you know. So the idea of the building being a gateway to a place, a city, a community, uh, a country. Uh, was something we stressed in the building. And then when you see Incheon, you see that as well. This is an entertaining and lighthearted exhibition that explores the architecture of flight and the cultural influence of travel by air as presented through the lens of Fentress architects. Along with sketches, renderings, photographs, large architectural models, and examples of structural innovations, the exhibit features travel posters, toys, and memorabilia from the history of flying fields to concepts for the airport of the future. It opens with Marco Brambilla's Getaway, a video installation that takes viewers soaring through the sky before touching down on the main runway at LAX, and then takes a diversion to showcase Gate Change, an animated history of air travel, which is a multimedia installation by New York artist Ben Rubin, featuring video and data-driven graphics created from social media posts about airport experiences. Not just focused on the architectural aesthetics, Fentress airports shape the passenger experience from, as Curtis says, curbside to airside. At Incheon, the airport offers retail hospitality, South Korean culture, and time-critical services. In Seattle, travelers can visit a version of the Pike Place Market without leaving the terminal, and the new LAX will accommodate the large double-decker Airbus 380. It is clear that Fentress finds inspiration in the modernist futuristic terminals designed by Aero Saarinen, particularly Washington Dulles and the TWA terminal at JFK, that feature the same cantonary curves Fentress utilized at Incheon and airports after DIA. Former Denver Mayor Federico Pena wanted DIA to make a bold statement across the world that would put Colorado on the global map. It was the largest public works project in North America at the time. Fentress was hired to make the working drawings for another design concept, but the original airport concept was already a year behind schedule and over budget $175 million. Curtis and his partner Jim Bradburn conceived of the fabric of the roof on the back of a napkin in a bar. Their design for the terminal building was completed $40 million under budget. It was the opportunity of a lifetime for the young architect who not only designs the buildings, but the furnishings for today's passengers. So it's an image that um, 
really has transcended this place, much like the uh, Sydney Opera House has transcended <coughs> Sydney. DIA has transcended Denver. It's the fifth busiest airport in the United States, tenth in the world. But it's not only the aesthetics of the airport that have helped it become transcendent. There was also the debacle of the automated baggage system that never worked, and there remains the never-ending conspiracy theories about underground bunkers to fuel the mystique. Fentress architects change the way airports are designed, but at what point does the concept of incorporating the surrounding landscape into the architectural structure become a trope? Perhaps that is why the exhibit also features the winners of the Fentress Global Challenge Airport of the Future Design Competition. To remain relevant, the studio must innovate what comes next. So 50 to 75, 100 years from now, airports are going to be very different. It's a young building type. It started with the barn, with the barnstormers, and here we are today with, uh, you know, the Denver airport and, and the futures ahead of us. We've got 7 billion people a year flying now, a million people right now in the sky. If you think of it, a million people in the sky, that's a lot of people. In 1958, uh, there was about 58 million passengers, commercial passengers, a year in the sky. And it's since 1958, it's zoomed. Here we are in 2012 to billions. And so they're, they're predicting by 2030 something in the neighborhood of 16 billion passengers. Now boarding is on view at the Denver Art Museum through October 7, 2012. This is Leanne Goble for AdobeAirstream.com.